In this video, we're going to be going over how to make a very irregularly shaped cabinet for your bathroom. So if you have a screwy bathroom like mine where there's just strange angles inside your bathroom that don't seem to make any sense, this is probably the video for you. Um, and I know a lot of the new houses have these kind of odd toilet rooms, as they like to call them, uh, that have these weird, strange angles. So that's what we're going to be going over is how to go and deal with making a cabinet that actually will work in that space and do the entire build process from ground floor up uh, all the way to making the top. So definitely stay tuned for that. Uh, if you're not already subscribed, please smash on that subscribe button, hit that like, and uh, don't forget to help the bell notification icon for all of our newest videos. In the meantime, let's get to the build as we have to make sure that we get all of our measurements in correctly. So making a template is going to be critical in order to be able to get this all done. So we're going to go ahead and make ourselves a template of the corners and everything. We'll get some of our measurements off from that and then we can get started a building. So this is our template that we made up for the odd corner that we're working with. It's basically made out of a bunch of eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper and then just slowly but surely cut down until we got it to the point that it would actually fit together and fill up the entire space in the shape that we wanted. So this gives you a little idea of what the actual shape of the cabinet is uh, if you're looking at it from the wall perspective. Now that we got all of our uh, angles and cuts and lengths all squared away, uh, with a template, we're going to go ahead and just start cutting down the sides and getting that part uh, knocked out. So basically we're taking a two foot by four foot board here and then just kind of chopping it down into the exact size we want for the cabinet itself. Now with the chamfer bit, we're going to go ahead and put a 45 on one side, which should make the installation a little bit easier when we're getting into that tight corner. This isn't like a normal cabinet where you'd want it like really, really firm against the wall. We want to have it secure against the wall, but we also need to be able to install it against the wall. Um, now during our build, we just kind of left it at this and just kind of got it to the point where we had that soft area in there. Uh, but you could add in an additional trim piece if you wanted to extend it out a little bit. So uh, that's something we'll kind of cover as we go through the video on how that exactly works. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, take one of our uh, cutoff pieces here and create a, basically it's a bracket or a supporting beam or bar, however you want to call it, uh, for the top and bottom. So these basically all are pretty much the same. You're just going to cut them out like this where they're nice and square. And then once you're done, we're going to go ahead and take that over to the bandsaw. Now at the bandsaw, we're just going to go ahead and put it uh, to a 45 degree angle. If you notice, we are using the miter gauge, but in reality, I'm actually watching the line that I already drew on here that's already a 45. Since it's a triangle, we still have 45 degree angles that we can work with, so that actually makes this project pretty easy when it comes down to those parts. All right, so now we're at the glue up stage. Um, once we get done gluing this up, which we'll be gluing it, uh, the plywood end grain to the face grain on the plywood on the other side, by the way, uh, then we're going to go ahead and put on these nifty little clamps here that I'll leave a link to in the description. Got these on Amazon for a few bucks, and uh, they really do help you keep the board squared up. And after uh, we get those all secured and sitting correctly, they're just going to come through here with the tack nailer and just start nailing uh, that board down there so that way it stays nice and secure the whole way through. So kind of the difference of the concept of glue up and either nail or um, put clamps on. In this case these are pretty heavy so we're nailing and clamping to make sure it all stays together real good and stays square as we need it to. Now 
Now we're just going to go ahead and install our brace that we made on the bandsaw earlier. There'll be a few of these both on the top and the bottom that we'll be putting in. And again we're just going to go ahead and tack nail the braces in just like we did the back so that way the glue has time to dry and we can keep moving forward. And then to give some, the top some balance we put in a small triangle brace. On this part we're just going to go ahead and create a triangle cut using one of our squared off cutoffs and just draw a simple line across so that way we can take it over and cut it down. We'll be using this for the shelves as well. Now basically what we're doing here is we're just going to use the jigsaw to go ahead and cut down that triangle uh, with a straight edge on the side here just to get a decent cut. Uh, primarily because the reason the bandsaw is just not a good tool for this because well my bandsaw only has a 10 inch throat so that's not really going to fit in there being that big of a board, not very easily at least. So just cut it down here and get ourselves a good template to work with. After gluing the uh, triangle in place, then we're just going to go ahead with the tack nailer and use a board the same size as the three quarter inch plywood and pop some nails into it. This part here we'll be cutting down to a 45 degree angle so that way we can better support the bottom portion of the cabinet and give it a little bit of extra rigidity so that way it's not so flexible. Now we're just going to go ahead and use our shelf pen jig that's made by Craig, not sponsored. Uh, however, I will leave a link down below uh, in case you're interested in getting one. They're actually really nice. Uh, but yeah, we're just going to go ahead and use that to um, put in all the little positions that we're going to be uh, using for the shelf. So we're going to do that real quick here. In this part we're just going to go ahead and put up one of our uh, cutoff pieces and draw a straight line from one side to the other so that way we can get an exact shelf measurement. And then we're just going to go ahead and cut that down. You could use a jigsaw with this or you could uh, just use it on the bandsaw like I'm doing. This is probably a little bit more accurate this way, but ultimately either would work. And then we're just going to go ahead and trim down the front here so that way we've got a nice smooth edge. Because of course we're always going to do a rough cut right off the bat. A little test fit in here and nice and stable and perfect. In this part here we're just going to be cutting down the pieces for the face frame. So that way we can go ahead and get set up for putting in our frame. And then we're just going to cut down some triangle wedges. For the most part, semi-temporary. We're going to be gluing these in place and then uh, putting the face frame on top of them so that it has a better gluing surface since we're at a weird angle. Then we'll just kind of tack nail these in place so that way they can't float around so we can just keep working. Now we're just going to go ahead and tack nail the frame onto the supports, onto those little wedges we were talking about. And those have glue on each of those so that way it stays in place good and steady after we're all done. Actually surprisingly well I might add. Now we're just going to go ahead and cut down the rails and styles for the door. Um, you notice we're using a little push block back here to go and uh, keep it steady and keep our hands away from that blade. And basically we just want to go ahead and cut down the top parts there for that tongue part and then we're going to cut the groove in on the sides. And this will allow us to insert the panel later on in the process. And 
now it's time to go ahead and make our rough cut here of our interior panel. Um, for the most part, if you did your measuring correct, this rough cut should be pretty accurate. Um, but remember, you do have a little bit of play on here, so it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. It just needs to be like 99.9% .9 perfect. So just go for that, and you should be perfectly fine to insert and do your thing. In this part here we're just going to go ahead and put our rails and styles together so this will take a few moments to go and put this all together just it's mostly about making sure that everything is aligned and that you have some good clamps sitting around like these where these are bar clamps they're actually just harbor freight specials so i mean we're not talking like something super expensive but uh, you know if you get the rockler ones are a little bit nicer ultimately though this should get the job done just uh, fit your piece in there after you get a couple of those put together. And just remember to glue each of the uh, tongues so that way when they go into the, the groove they'll be good to rock and roll. Now we wanted to go ahead and take a look for any deviations, any bumps that might be in here before we go to paint. Uh, whichever ones we have, like any lines or anything, just fill that in with some wood filler. I'll leave a link to what we used uh, down in the description. And then go ahead and fill in where the insert is with some just standard run-of-the-mill caulk. This is used actually for trim, so pretty cheap stuff, but I can tell you what, your wife, spouse, maybe even yourself will truly appreciate having this in here. Just run a bead down the sides there. And this will allow the wood to continue to expand because it's made out of uh, kind of an elastic material. And then just smooth it out so it doesn't ruin the profile. After that, we're just going to go ahead and do our drilling for our hinges. I'll see if I can get a link for this as well. And then just test fit the hinges, make sure they fit in there real nice and sturdy. As long as they do, pretty much good to go. Now we're just going to go ahead and uh, give it some coats here. We actually use some blue chalk paint and lacquer to go ahead and finish this up. As you can see, that comes out looking really nice and kind of gives it that older kind of look like it's uh, been kind of in a farmhouse. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed part one. Uh, part two will be coming up here very shortly. Um, just wanted to remind you guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, hit that bell notification icon for all of our newest videos. In part two, we'll be going over how the actual top is made and uh, put final assembly all together. So definitely stay tuned for that. In the meantime, stay safe in the shop.